Grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father and Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior. You know, as I was preparing this sermon, I was trying to figure out how can I tie Mother's Day in. And some texts lead a little bit easier to that than others. You know, God shows no partiality. You know, where I was going to go is, well, mothers show no partiality. Right? (laughs) Sometimes. (laughs) Maybe sometimes not. (laughs) Because they are human. And sin remains in them. But mothers have a, there's a special kind of love from a mother that's different than from a father. My mother had a way of instilling things in us without directly telling us. Similar to what God is doing us, doing to us in our sanctification. Sometimes mothers don't have to slap you aside the head, although it happens from time to time, probably. <laughs> but there's a subtle way a mother raises their children. Okay, it's not me because I'm not moving. <laughs> that gets the point across where the child realizes they're wrong and corrects it. There's a little story that I that I discovered and it's it had been a long time Um, this boy's name is Tyson been a long time since he'd gotten out of bed on Sunday morning to go to church. You know, yes, he would go to the candlelight service on Christmas. And I'm sure he went to the service on Easter when he came back from college. But then after college, it just kind of drifted away. But he saw this church, and ironically, in this story, the church was Grace Church which used to be our name before, a number of years ago. So he went in. And he went into the church and he slipped in the back two minutes after the service started and just kind of sat back in the back row hoping no one would notice. It's one thing good about being late because everything started so probably no one saw him sneak in but there was an usher that welcomed him and said they were glad that he was here and then of course the pastor welcomed everybody and told them he they were he was glad that they were here What about Bethlehem Lutheran? You know, the, there's a guy that sits in the, the median here every once in a while, and there's a group of people, mostly men, at the exit of I-75 and 80. And they're there all the time. All the time, they're there. What about the guy who uh, maybe doesn't smell so good because he's living in the woods? Would he be welcome? Or better yet, because these are people we don't know, but what about the person who hasn't been in a church and maybe three, four years, 
maybe seven. What if they were to come back? Or what about the person that is a sinner? Do we show partiality to those? Well, you know what I'm going to say next, because if I had a big mirror up here, we're the same. We're that same. Got really quiet in here. (laughs) Really, really quiet. We have to admit that at times we do show partiality, right? I mean, that's that's part of our human nature. But God shows no partiality. And in our sanctification, in the Holy Spirit working in us through the word and through his body and blood, he corrects how we see things, so we can see things more like God sees them, so we can see things more like Jesus sees them. Notice anything different this morning about me? See if anybody guesses it. What's that? That was a while back. I didn't have them last Sunday. Yes. Yes. I can see much clearer. It's, it's like, and you who struggle with vision understand this. The one, I think it was Good Friday, I'm standing up here. No one said anything to me. But I'm reading. I'm right there, and I lost my place. I could not find my place. All the words started flowing together. And I stood there, and it seemed like an eternity and then all of a sudden, they come back. Well, these have, are much more powerful, they, so they've corrected my vision. And the same thing that our Lord and Savior is doing is correcting our vision towards others. Because at times, our vision, <laughs> well, it's not real good. And I'm included, I'm there right with you. I'm there right with you. We try and we try and we try and then sometimes we fail and we fail and we fail. But our Lord and Savior did not fail. And that is our salvation that we have faith in Christ and we trust in him no matter what. Even if the world is falling apart, even... I know some of your mothers, and they're wonderful, or they were wonderful, and now they are resting with Christ. So I always have to kind of phrase this. I do know people where their mothers were not real good. There's a word called dysfunctional. I'm not... You guys can relax. (laughs) But when we are in Christ, (laughs) he helps us along with that. So we see how God sees that he wants all People who come to him and repent. Not that our lives will be perfect. Not that our world will be perfect. Not that our government will be perfect. But that we trust in our Lord and Savior. That we see the grace that he has given us. 
the grace, God's riches at Christ's expense. He died once and for all, for all who believe. Even those who are dysfunctional. (laughs) I always think one time or another throughout our lives, we're all dysfunctional sometimes. I'm right there. But because of Christ, because of his grace, he, at his own expense, took it on. And it's through our faith that we can see others how Christ would see them, that he desires them to come into his kingdom. He desires those who do not seem to belong in the world, but he does not give up on seeking them out. And the more and more we are faithful, then the more and more our vision clears, and we can see that, and we love those others like that. Yes, there are times we do not do it perfectly. Because unfortunately, sin still clings to us. But in Christ, there is forgiveness. And we are under his grace. And we continue to walk with him to be faithful. Not that our works are perfect. Because his... I got tripped up. Our works are not ours, they're his. (laughs) They're his of what he is doing inside of us. We're the ones that get in the way. I'm the one that gets in the way sometimes. (laughs) I'll tell you a little story. uh, We've got an RV that we've had. It's about 16 years old, and I put it on the market. You know what I forgot to do? I forgot to ask God for his will. (laughs) Whatever would happen, his will. Now, it might sound kind of funny, but anytime we bought a car or bought a house, for years we would always pray, not formally kneel in front of the altar, sometimes in our mind, but trusting in him, not Whatever happens is his will, and it's going to be all right. And then our vision gets clearer and clearer. So when we see those in need, when we see those in need of Christ, of his forgiveness, we can share the love of Christ with them. And for different people, Maybe it's sharing a love of Christ by providing a meal. Maybe it's sharing the word of God with them. Maybe there's many things out there. We are each called to serve in different ways. We each have talents that God has given us. But we look to Christ and his impartiality. Because he does not see race or age, rich or poor, a lifetime Christian, or a new believer. God's love reaches to you who have known and worshipped God as long as you can remember. And he also reaches to those who are searching to fill the emptiness in their lives. And he's using us. Because as I said out in the mockery, God doesn't have any hands or feet. Who has seen God in this place? No one raised their hand. (laughs) 
I thought somebody was, but they didn't. <laughs> we are his hands and feet. We are his servants. It's one of the dangers of not following your notes. I could go on for a half hour, but I won't. (laughs) It's God correcting our vision so we can see those. So we can say a person who denies Christ As someone God is waiting for to come back to them. Because sometimes they just need to see the love of Christ inside somebody. I might have told this story, but I I ran into an atheist. I've run into quite a few. But come to find out, their mother had died when they were 12 years old. And they were angry with God. Now, as I had this conversation, I didn't say, well, you just said you're angry with God, cause so how could be an atheist? Because <laughs> I want him to keep talking. But you see where I was going. He still, if you're angry with God, he still has a connection with God. He still believes in God. And my prayer is that he will come back to Christ and see the love of Christ Not that our lives are pure and perfect and beautiful all the time, because there is suffering in this world. But that we who are faithful see the world differently. And at times, maybe we got to correct our vision. (laughs) At times. But that is why we keep coming back to hear the words about Christ, the gospel. That yes, you, a sinner, are forgiven. He died for you so that you could live. We have a message The gospel, the pure gospel message. We are saved by grace through our faith in Christ. And then he is working in us to change our vision, to correct our vision as we see the world. So we can see the world. I don't want to say exactly like God, but more like God daily. And more and more. And when he comes again, when Christ comes again, all of you can take your glasses and throw them out. (laughs) Because you will see clearly the same way God sees. And all sin will be gone and all every tear will be dried up. And we will be fully restored, walking with our God and Savior in the garden just as he had had intended in the beginning. Amen.